So this is Impact, I'm Yalda Hakim. President Biden visits Kyiv, bringing a message of unwavering commitment to Ukraine nearly a year after Russia's invasion. Kyiv stands, and Ukraine stands. Democracy stands. The Americans stand with you. Mr. Biden brought a promise of more weapons and ammunition to fight the Russian invasion. We'll have the latest from Kyiv. Um, U.S. President Joe Biden has made a surprise visit to Kyiv, his first to Ukraine since Russia invaded almost a year ago. Mr. Biden announced more military, political and financial help for Kyiv. And he said Ukraine would be supported by the U.S. for as long as it takes. He also said Vladimir Putin's war of conquest in Ukraine is failing. Our correspondent James Waterhouse reports from Kyiv. In a city no stranger to big visitors, this was the biggest. The most powerful politician in the world, Ukraine's biggest ally, arriving to the heart of a war, to the delight of his host. Joe Biden has been here before, but not as president. That is so important signal for us. And all we are proud of it. Thank you very much for coming, Mr. President. I think it's my eighth trip. And much has changed. Much has changed indeed. Just listen to the sirens which accompanied their visit to Kiev's St. Michael's Cathedral. This is no doubt a significant and symbolic visit. You have the US president visiting in the middle of a full-scale conflict with all of those associated risks. But this also sends a message to Moscow that America won't shy away from supporting Ukraine. President Zelensky will see this as a chance, though, to ask for more. There was substance to the symbolism. Another military package worth $500 million was announced, with the promise it will keep coming. We know that there'll be very difficult days and weeks and years ahead. But Russia's aim was to wipe Ukraine off the map. Putin's war of conquest is failing. The results of these visits will undoubtedly be felt on the battlefield, strengthening our troops and liberating our territories. There is still a delay between hardware being promised and used. In a war which is costly in just about every sense, time is not Ukraine's friend. This is a conflict which started in 2014. It's nearly a year since Russia's full-scale invasion. Few expected Kyiv would hold, let alone host America's commander-in-chief. James Waterhouse, BBC News, Kyiv. Well, earlier I spoke to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, who's in Kyiv. She told me President Biden told the story about the telephone call he made to President Zelensky after Russia invaded last year. Here in Kyiv, he talked about how he could hear explosions as President Zelensky spoke to him. And it was underlined that the first Western leader to speak with the Ukrainian president as Russia's invasion got underway was President Biden, who offered him his fullest support. And what President Zelensky said then, and what he hasn't stopped saying since then, is that he's trying to rally worldwide support, as much support as he can. And President Biden's visit today just underlines how successful President Zelensky has been in trying to rally nations behind Ukraine. And I think President Biden, when he was asked by a journalist what, the, what his goal for this visit lasting just a few hours was, he said, I want to really send the message that we're not going anywhere. We're staying, as he said, while knowing full well that public support for this, uh, for supporting Ukraine, while still high, is dropping. And Western militaries are struggling to keep up with the pace of demand for the ammunition, weaponry, the long-range artillery, and now fighter jets that the, the Ukrainians need to fight this war, on their behalf, in effect, against Russia. Please, uh, I suppose the question is, where do things stand a year on? You were uh, there at the beginning of, of the conflict. I, I was in uh, the west of the country, in, in Lviv. Um, it was an intense moment. Um, where are we now, 12 months on? 
Well, you will remember, Yalda, at the beginning, you couldn't find a Western military analyst who didn't subscribe to the view that in a matter of days, possibly three days, that Ukraine would fall, possibly that President Zelensky would leave, uh, the comedian turned president, that Ukraine, the little Ukraine simply couldn't stand up to the might of the Russian army. And yet, with every month which went by, every week which went by, it became absolutely clear that the world, including Ukrainians, had overestimated the Russian military and underestimated the Ukrainian and not just the Ukrainian armed forces but what we call the home front the the resolute spirit of the Ukrainians to stand up uh, against a president against President Putin who essentially said your country doesn't have a right to exist you are part of Russia but a year on Russia did occupy didn't take did take over more territory in the nearly year-long invasion now it hasn't made the advances including Kiev that it had expected at the beginning but it is it is going to be a tough fight for Ukraine. And while President Zelensky said he hoped this war would end this year, that's very optimistic. But that's certainly what his Western, his NATO allies would want, uh, because otherwise it's going to become year on year ever more difficult to sustain the kind of support that President Biden spoke about today here in Kyiv. That was our chief international correspondent, Liz Doucette, there. Well, I'm joined now by Ukrainian MP Andrei Zupanian. He is in Zakarpatia in western Ukraine. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here uh, on the program. President Biden said that uh, the United States will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Just uh, tell us uh, the reaction there to those statements uh, from Ukraine. Well, people are very happy to see President Biden on our territory. It's a huge gesture for us, and uh, it's a huge signal, not only for Ukrainians, but also for Russia and also for other countries of the world. This week is very important for Ukrainians and Ukraine, because nine years ago, we made Viktor Yanukovych, pro-Russian president of Ukraine, to leave the country. And these events are now known as Revolution of Dignity, where 100 of Ukrainians died. After that, Russians, they started invasion of Donbass. And almost a year ago, they started full-scale invasion of Ukrainian territory. So the war is still going on. Kyiv is a target for Russians' long-distance missiles. And at this time, President of the United States comes to Kyiv to visit our president and to visit our capital. Yeah, this is I an extremely big gesture for us. A big gesture, a promise of, of uh, an aid package, uh, about $500 million uh, worth. Um, what does that mean uh, to the Ukrainian people? We, are, we keep fighting. We need all that support. We need money. We need fighter jets. We need tanks, weapons to keep fighting with Russia. It's almost one year since we started doing that. And I think we are successfully doing that. And we can win this war, actually. We can retake all the territories that are captured by Russians, including Crimea. But we don't be able to do that without Western support, without support of developed countries and also United States of America. So we understand this visit, you know, as a signal for us that they, United States and civilized world, democratic countries, are going to support us during next 12 months, you know, 24 months, whatever it takes to win this war for Ukrainians and Ukraine. The, the reality on the ground, though, is that there are big promises that are being made, and, and we heard many of those promises this weekend at the Munich Security uh, Conference as well. But there is a time lag between what's being promised and then what's actually able to be delivered uh, to the battlefield. Yes, there is. But, you know, like, we are in a position when we can only wait and then speed up our partners to bring the weapon faster. So everything else does not depend purely on us. Once the uh, weapon is on our territory, we're doing our best to put that into the front line as, as fast as possible. So here we are trying to convince our partners and what President Zelensky did when he visited the United Kingdom. So he asked the prime minister to bring weapon to Ukraine as fast as possible. And instead of July, that was announced earlier, we got the promise to, brought, to bring that to Ukraine in March. So that's what how we are going you know, to fast in the deliveries of weapons to Ukraine. Uh, and because, of course, there is this concern of this spring offensive, uh, which many intelligence agencies say that the Russians have already started. 
Yes, they did, and uh, we are waiting for the uh, Putin's announcement on 24th of February. He'll be doing some speech tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. So we are, we'll be listening to that. What he's going to do? Whether he's going to start any, like you know, like any further invasion? I mean, starting some new attempts from other territories, or he will just scale up the uh, what they're doing now, their attempts in Donbas region. So that's very true. But also, I think our army is now in preparation of counterattack, and what Western allies are trying to send to us the signal that we they are providing us with a weapon, but they're expecting that we will start using that weapon as soon as possible. Yeah, um, because of course, uh, what what it, they're also saying, uh, the Western Alliance, is, is that the Russians are, are prepared to throw everything uh, at this spring offensive, including um, several hundred thousand more soldiers. They can, you know, like we can't understand what they're doing just, you know, with, with our brains, because sometimes they're doing some weird things. So. I would not say that they, are, they cannot, you know, bring thousands or hundreds of thousands of people to the front and just kill them there. They can do that. But, okay, so what is our choice? So our choice, we are standing, you know, on our land. We are fighting for our country. We don't have any other choice. They're just, you know, fighting, keep fighting, keep killing Russians and keep, you know, freeing our territory to, to bring back our country to the uh, borders that we had before. Uh, even invasion in 2014. Ukrainian MP Andriy Zupanian, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. Thank you.